In this chapter, we will discuss a part of descriptive statistics, tabular, and graphical presentations. It is expected that students understand the concepts and definitions of this chapter. Therefore, as a review, I will run through the chapter very quickly without providing much explanation. The main purpose of this video is to provide a quick summary of these concepts and definitions and see how they fit into the big picture. First, let's make sure we understand the difference between categorical data and quantitative data. Categoric data are labels or names used to identify categories of like items. For example, the gender of customer, male or female, the education level of employee, high school or less, or college or higher, etc. Quantitative data are numerical values that indicate how many or how much. For example, the years of education of each employee, or GDP of the U.S. in a given year. Now, let's see how we can summarize categorical data. Probably the most useful tool for summarizing categorical data is a frequency distribution. It is a tabular summary of data showing the number or frequency of observations in each of several non-overlapping categories or classes. For example, there are 600 female students and 400 male students in this graduating class. Suppose there is a data set with n observations. Related frequency is defined as the frequency of a class divided by n. Following our previous example, the related frequencies of female and male in the graduating class are 0.6 and point 0.4 respectively. The textbook differentiates percent frequency from related frequency. They define percent frequency as the related frequency multiplied by 100. I'm not a big fan of that. In reality, people use related and percent frequency interchangeably. It is totally fine to say that the related frequencies of male and female in the graduate class are 40% and 60% respectively. So, related or percent frequency distribution is simply a tabular summary of related or percent frequency for each class. A bar chart is a graphical display for depicting categorical data summarized in the frequency related or percent frequency distribution. A pie chart is a graphical device for presenting data summaries based on subdivision of a circle into sectors that correspond to the relative frequency for each class. Here, I want to emphasize the fact that a bar chart is used for summarizing categoric data. Later on, we will introduce histogram, which is very similar to bar chart are used for summarizing quantitative data. Now, let's see how we summarize quantitative data. Frequency distribution defined earlier can also be used for summarizing quantitative data. But we need to be a little bit careful. In creating a frequency distribution for quantitative data, we usually take the following three steps. First, Determine the number of non-overlapping classes. Second, determine the width of each class. It is recommended that the width be the same for each class. So approximately, the class width can be determined by the difference between the largest data value and the smallest data value divided by the number of classes. Lastly, we determine lower and upper class limit. The lower class limit identifies the smallest possible data value assigned to the class. The upper class limit identifies the largest possible value assigned to the class. It is important that class limits are chosen such that 
all classes are mutually exclusive. That is, each data point belongs to one and only one class. Sometimes people want to know the midpoint of class. It is simply the value halfway between the lower and upper class limits. Relative and percent frequency distributions are defined in the same manner as for categorical data. Dot plot is a graphical device that summarizes data by the number of dots above each data value on the horizontal axis. This horizontal axis shows the range of the data and each data point is represented by a dot placed above the axis. Histogram is probably the most useful graphical presentation for quantitative data. It displays a frequency distribution or relative distribution of quantitative data by placing the class intervals on the horizontal axis and the frequencies or relative frequencies on the vertical axis. I will show you how to plot histogram with Python's matplotlib in the next video. In addition to frequency or relative frequency distribution, cumulative distribution is also often used to summarize quantitative data. In cumulative distribution, instead of showing the frequency or relative frequency of each class, the cumulative frequency distribution shows the number of data points with values less than or equal to the upper class limit of each class. Similarly, in the cumulative relative frequency distribution, it shows the proportion of data points with values less than or equal to the upper limit of each class. A stable leaf display is sometimes used to graphically display simultaneously the rank order and the shape of a distribution of data. Now, let's see how to summarize data for two variables using tables. A natural way to summarize data for two variables is to use a table. A fancy name is cross-tabulation. It is a tabular summary of data for two variables with the classes for one variable being represented by the rows and the classes for the other variable being represented by columns. It is a common practice that data in two or more cross tabulations are combined or aggregated to produce a summary cross tabulation showing how two variables are related. But when this happens, we have to be very careful of something called Simpson's paradox. Simply put, Simpson's paradox is the phenomenon that the opposite conclusions are drawn based on aggregate and unaggregated data. Let's use an example to explain. Judge Lockett and Kendall presided over cases in common pleas court and municipal court over the last few years. Some of their verdicts were appealed. In most of the cases, the appeal court upheld the original verdicts. But in some of the cases, those verdicts were reversed. For each judge, a cross-tabulation was developed based on verdict upheld or reversed in type of court, common pleas or municipal. Suppose the two cross-tabulations were combined by aggregating the type of court data. The resulting aggregated cross-tabulation has two variables, verdict upheld or reversed and charge, lock it or candle. This summary cross-tabulation shows the number of appeals in which the verdict was upheld and the number of appeals in which the verdict was reversed for both judges. We see the summary here. It shows that 86% of verdicts were upheld for Judge Lockett, while 88% of the verdicts were upheld for Judge Kendall. It seems like Judge Kendall is doing a slightly better job. However, let's look at the unaggregated cross tabulations. From the unaggregated cross tabulations, 
we see right away that Judge Lockett is actually doing a better job. For Judge Lockett, the verdicts were upheld 91% of the time in common police court and 85% of the time in the municipal court. For Judge Kendall, on the other hand, the verdicts were upheld 90% of the time in common police court and 80% of the time in the municipal court. Type of the court turns out to be a very important factor when evaluating the record of the judges. Both judges are better in common pleas. However, large majority of Judge Lucky's verdicts appealed are common pleas, whereas the large majority of Judge Kendall's verdicts appealed are municipal cases. Graphical display is very powerful for recognizing patterns and trends of relationship between two variables. Scatter diagram or scatter plot is a graphic display of the relationship between two quantitative variables. One variable is shown on the horizontal axis and the other on the vertical axis. More often than not, a trend line that provides an approximation of the relationship between two variables is added to scatter diagram. Side-by-side -side bar chart is a graphic display for depicting multiple bar charts on the same display. A stacked bar chart is a bar chart in which each bar is broken into rectangular segments of a different color, showing the related frequency of each class similar to a pie chart. Please take a look at the examples of all these diagrams in our textbook.